A very good afternoon, a dear friend, Ambassador Jan Prasad, distinguished participants. In the outset, let me thank you very much for providing the opportunity today to discuss the topic under discussion, as you mentioned. By the way, thank you very much for your kind introduction. I wish I deserved that, but keep struggling for it. The topic under discussion, as you all know, Afghanistan at the crossroad, which rightly portrays, as Ambassador Prasad outlined, the geoeconomic and geopolitical location of Afghanistan. And of course, as a region, we are tied together through common interests and challenges. While Afghanistan being the source of regional prosperity and security, I will talk about two sorts of complexes, security complexes and economic development complexes. First, security as has been defined by Bozen and Weaver in 2003, the securitization and desecretization of states being in a region to analyze, and do, they cannot be analyzed without thinking of everyone separately and all together, and to think of resolving them being apart, we cannot be able to find a common outcome as we had designed. So all interlinked as a region, it's very important that we speak collectively when it comes to security as a region. Of course, Afghanistan's role as the crossroad, as has been mentioned here in the outset, at the crossroad, Afghanistan's role and potential is very crucial to be active and to be always paid attention to when it comes to collective regional security. When you talk about security, terrorism and extremism are the biggest challenges. And of course, Afghanistan has been the greatest victim, together with countries like India, who suffer from the same menace but luckily, of course, not as bad as Afghanistan, but Afghanistan's belief, Afghanistan's, and of course, India believes in the same way, that without a peaceful and stable Afghanistan, we will not be able to have a peaceful and secure region, and in that includes India. Here as a region, I have compartmentalized our region in three categories, South Asia, Central Asia and the Gulf. And how we have the we have problem in these three regions, sub-regions, when it comes to the whole region as, as region that we all talk about. In South Asia, our engagement in the context of SARC, how it functions, and our engagement with India and the problems, as we mentioned earlier by Ambassador Prasad, the problem that we have with Pakistan. This is how South Asia is defined right now, how we move in the context of SARC and how we see our relationships, especially when it comes to Afghanistan. And of course, India's engagement with Afghanistan has been always very constructive, aimed at ensuring peace and stability in Afghanistan. On the contrary, unfortunately, we have been tense when it comes to security issues with Pakistan. In Central Asia, we see countries dealing with one another, one another individually. At the, at the bilateral level, we have engagement, but not as a region. When it comes to Central Asia, to have a collective approach toward engagement and relationships. In the Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, we have Iran and Saudi Arabia how they engage and the spillover effects over the entire region. And of course, that comes as well, the case of Afghanistan. So all these engagements, where this is in the context of South Asia, 
in the context of Central Asia and the Persian Gulf, we see a situation that unfortunately has taken us apart for ensuring our desired goal, which is to have a peaceful, stable region for our future. In the context of economic development complexes, again, as was mentioned earlier by Mr. Prasad, and let me restate that economically speaking, we are all interlinked. And Afghanistan's role in that country is again very fundamental. Reluctance of any from any member of the region has impact on Afghanistan and of course on the entire region when it comes to regional integration and economic cooperation. And of course, Afghanistan has already provided opportunity in various mechanisms such as Casa 1000, the Chabahar, and a number of other Entapi, which was luckily launched last year, to connect the region and Afghanistan to play a role as a connector or a bridge. As was briefly mentioned by Ambassador Prasad, last year I, I published a book that concentrated on economic opportunities and the commonality that we have when it comes to secure economic viability of the region and the economic cooperation that is possible in our region. And that book was titled A Paradigm Shift and that specifically focused on Afghanistan, India and Pakistan. And I have and I in my book I use more the vision that was laid out by Alam Iqbal Lahuri who said Afghanistan would, if Afghanistan in turmoil, that would mean the entire region in turmoil. And of course, the role of Afghanistan, Pakistan, India when it comes to security, uh, economic cooperation, integration has always been crucial and will be crucial in the future. In that book, I focus on four major factors of instability. The superpower struggle in Afghanistan, the non-state actors, of course, we call it non-state actors, but they, are, they live on support of the state as far as their activities are concerned in Afghanistan. The weak institutions in Afghanistan. The problem of drug and, ter uh, and terrorism, the link between the two. And the geostrategic location of Afghanistan that has brought about and it has caused a problem of, of the Duran line that we have for years undissolved and that has caused a problem between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So I have analyzed these four major factors and the geostrategic location of Afghanistan, what, has, what it has brought to Afghanistan in terms of the, the disputes that we have and that dispute, more importantly, the Duran that has created a situation between the two countries and causing the lingering problem of terrorism and extremism that is being exported to Afghanistan through various ways and means, particularly the use of resources and the insurgent groups under various names, such as the Taliban, LET, whatever name that you see in the countries of Afghanistan when it comes to insecurity, we think are, and of course we believe, are politically motivated and creating insecurity in Afghanistan. In that book, again, I've analyzed miscalculations of major powers in Afghanistan, not only now, not only 10 years ago, but starting from the 70s onward in the 80s, how miscalculation of those powers brought a situation that is still visible in Afghanistan and the effect of those miscalculations are visible in Afghanistan. In the context of Afghanistan and Pakistan relations, we have focused more on the strategic depth doctrine and how this concept brought situation that includes the use of terrorism, the sanctuaries provided terrorists, and a number of other situations that has created insecurity and still continues to, to be the case. In the, let me be brief on, the, on, the, on my book because it's more about the uh, crossroad of uh, Afghanistan, the crossroad and the regional security situation because uh, Ambassador Prasad focus, uh, mentioned my book it's, it is in three particular areas the, the problems between Afghanistan and Pakistan 
the relationship with India and Afghanistan, how that relationship has laid out and has been rolled in the last uh, many years, particularly after the 2001, um, you know, uh, post-Taliban situation, and the commonalities between the three countries, how those commonalities could be utilized for the better for Afghanistan and the region as a whole. So I'll skip details of, of the book, which concentrated on the commonalities and coming to the uh, most important theme of today that we concentrate when it comes to Afghanistan being at the crossroad, and that is the new great game. We have been speaking of the great game for decades, and we think that there is a sign of new great game between countries in the region and, and beyond. So we hope that the miscalculation that took place years ago, ago and decades ago and that caused problems of insecurity and terrorism in Afghanistan are not repeated again in one way or the other. You all know about the uh, meeting that took place recently between Russia and Pakistan and China in Moscow. And you also know about the news that came out of, of that meeting and the debate whether the Taliban be supported and engaged when it comes to fighting Daesh in Afghanistan. We think this is a one step forward and two step back approach, approach as we have been, uh, and we have, as we have engaged, uh, you know, in such activities for, for, for years to deal with the problem of terrorism and extremism in Afghanistan. And we hope that we, we will not repeat those mistakes which were, uh, which were made in the last years and decades between major powers and the countries in the region um, uh, um, when it comes to collective peace and security and the relationship that we have in the region. The new normal, which was discussed in the Rai Sanai dialogue recently, is, is also a very important theme. And we think this can be part of, and is, can be part of the, the great, new great game that we uh, see between major powers. The, multi the, the, uh, uh, the multipolarity and multilateralism We believe that this is an opportunity for Afghanistan and should be used as an opportunity because the mistakes made and of, or the uh, relationship that did not work out in the last decades in the region, perhaps because of the blocks th that we had in the region and how those blocks affected the situation in Afghanistan today, if those engagements that we have can be arranged are aligned in a manner that bring a situation of win-win between countries and that we move away from zero-sum games that we had in the last decades. So we hope that the new game that is in action right now is different from the game that we've gone through in the last decades when it comes to the situation, the security situation in Afghanistan and the relationship that was 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 um, uh, you know uh, cre uh, the, the, the relation which was laid out on the situation of Afghanistan that brought about a change, and the change of course uh, uh, in the last decades was was such that did not brought did not bring a situation that all that we decide as a peaceful and stable Afghanistan, but brought a situation that further deteriorated the situation. Today, the new normal and the new great game, which uh, is taking place at a time that we, as a region, especially Afghanistan and India, which are affected more when it comes to uh, you know certain relationship in the region, that we stay active, stay engaged, along with other countries in the region who are also desiring for a similar positive uh, change in the region, that we engage in a manner that repel the past mistakes and move forward in a manner that will bring about a change different from the last decades, a change that will take forward all of us towards a common, uh, 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 common um, uh, goal, a goal of peace and stability and economic opportunity. To sum up, as a topic of Afghanistan being at the crossroad, we hope that the region and the world powers will also will have the same view that unless Afghanistan is peaceful and stable, we will not be able to have a peaceful region where Afghanistan being at the crossroad. We hope that the new US administration of, in, uh, in, in the US will engage the region and the countries in the region in a manner that will remove perceptions 
created by some countries in this region that drive them towards activities and engagements in a manner that we think are going to be counterproductive, that we see the major powers in the region, especially our region and the world powers, the United States and others, come to conclusion that we in the region be on the same page, that we work for win-win and move away from zero-sum games. So I thought to give you a brief of, of uh, the topic and of course be ready to, and we would be happy to have some questions on the current situation of Afghanistan and beyond. Thank you very much.